Welcome back to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Virchel. Today we are doing a mixed media canvas entitled Dream. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below. Thank you for shopping through my affiliate links. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share the video. So I'm starting off with a canvas and I can't remember the size of it but I'll put that in the links and I am putting modeling paste through this crafters workshop stencil and I'm putting it in various places all across I want to put some interest in there and I just love the way acrylic paint catches in the nooks and the crannies of the modeling paste which is why I'm doing it before I put the color on. I'm just cleaning up a little bit here and there of what I don't like and you can totally do that. It doesn't show afterwards. I'm using a palette knife here and Liquitex um, light modeling paste, I believe. It's just what I had handy and I grabbed it. But you can use a gift card or old credit card to apply the um, modeling paste. I have a lot of success provide putting it on very evenly when I use a credit card. And you can also use um, wall compound spackle and I've had a lot of success there now I want to build lots of layers on this piece so I dug up my script stamp and I'm applying black acrylic paint with a makeup sponge onto this script stamp now in the end you do not see the script it gets totally covered and I do not reapply it so you can skip this step or rather I would put the paint on and then actually apply it in the same way on top. So now I'm getting out a variety of blues and teals and aquas um, and I'm just applying this with my finger. I'm just finger painting on the canvas. And I do zoom out in a little bit, so sorry for the extra close-up right now. Now the thing I find, and you can see that it doesn't quite get in all the, the nooks and the crannies with the modeling paste and into the canvas. So some of that I work in with my fingers, but you'll see what I do with that in a little bit to get rid of it. But don't worry if it's not perfect coverage right off the bat, because we can ad address that. Now you can go up and down, you can go side to side. I'm kind of going at an angle here. It seems to be what I tend to do. And I just want a nice combination of lights and darks in, in the same tone. All these colors are found right next to each other on the color wheel. So I know that they're not going to make mud. They're not going to give me an unpleasant color to deal with. So no matter where I put them, whether they're wet or they're dry, whether or when they're wet, they're not going to mix and make an ugly color. If I was adding yellow in here, I'd have to be careful and I have to make sure I dry it and I don't want to blend it with some of the colors that I might be adding. But because I'm picking an agalus colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel, I avoid all of that. And I'm just trying to build up so you can see some of that texture by putting some of the dark paint over top of what the light over top of the light paint where the texture is, and vice versa, putting the light paint over where it's darker. And you can see lots of that white in there. But hang on, I'm going to deal with that. Now, I like painting the sides as I go. Some people want to paint the sides black after the fact. That's fine. 
And sometimes I end up there anyways, but I like to paint as I go and apply even the stamps and the stenciling that I do, some of that onto the side, so it looks very cohesive. The problem with this, it's, it's a bigger piece. It's bigger than 11 by 14, but I don't know how big. And um, here I'm addressing the little white flecks that still exist. I'm thinning the paint down, the same colors, and just applying it with a, kind of a watered down thing uh, mix. And it seems to get into all those nooks and crannies and colors it up. I'm kind of paying attention if it's dark blue I try to put the blue if it's green but I'm not overly specific but I'm using a considerable amount of water here just to um, get into those little areas and I'm using a bit of a softer brush so that it works its way into the nooks and crannies so I like, for cohesiveness, applying the same stencil. Now I'm using a dark, I think I got out the purple here, and I'm using the same stencil that I used the molding, modeling paste with on here. And I love that look, because now you have it, you've got the subtlety of the modeling paste, which I, in the end, I haven't decided to um, make it stand out more. And then you have the uh, darker, stenciled area. So I'm grabbing this Peacock Feathers. This is a Balzer design and it's another crafters workshop one. And I'm putting this on here and it's green and you're not really seeing a whole lot of this. Now this stencil is a stencil that I cut with my silhouette. But I'm going to put a link to a crafters workshop stencil that is very similar to this and will give a good the same kind of effect. I'm going with the peacock colors here. I totally am. And I like the white here. It's giving me enough white that it's really standing out. So stenciling with the darker color and the white, you want that contrast. So you, those layers perk up. So this is a Kaiser Craft stamp. And it's not called netting. I'll put the link in the, in the description box. And I'm applying the dark purple to the stamp and pressing it down to get that very fine layer of interest. Now the difference with doing it on a page, a page in a book is very flat and you have a very hard surface underneath. The canvas gives a little, so it's a little tough to get a completely um, great print. So I'm using the same stamp and this time I'm putting white on and you can see that shows up a little bit better on camera. But you can see both of those and I like always doing a light and a dark of a very similar uh, stamp or stencil. And here I'm applying it around the edges. This is another crafters workshop stencil and I'm doing it with the light aqua it's adding interest in another layer it's not something that's going to show up as much as some of these others but it does show up now this is the liner that you hold the cup that goes around the coffee cup and I'm just applying some dark paint in there and getting a cross hatch on there. This is one of my favorite found objects for stamping. So before it hits the recycle bin, use it in your mixed media project or art journal page.
I apologize that this isn't so close up, but with the size of this canvas, it gets really difficult to get everything on camera in, in screen. So I've got some more found objects. This is from the bottom of a rotisserie chicken that we bought at Costco. And I'm just stamping into the gold paint on the jelly plate and then pressing this plastic onto the canvas. And it gives these little hexagon gold effects. Now I'm using a bottle cap and I'm using the same. I find that it, the paint gets on the found objects a little bit easier if you use the gel plate. If you don't have a gel plate, if you get one of those squishy silicone baking mats, that works as well. Or you can just do it on, on a regular um, craft mat as well. It's not necessary, it just works better. And it's a great use of a small, small one using the bottom of this pudding cup and it's just an interesting pattern that I noticed when I was gel printing and I just want some of that on here. Now as you can see I'm not being particularly careful to get a perfect stamp every time. I'm very happy with how this is progressing. Love the colors. Now I have this dark, I believe this is dioxazine purple, and I'm just splattering with it, adding a little bit of splatter. Again, it's another layer of interest. And then I'm going to splatter with white. And I like using a fan brush to splatter with, and you know when you thin the paint enough with how the size of the splatter and because it's acrylic paint underneath if it if it splatters and you don't really like how it ended up you do have some time as long as the first layer is dry to go back and clean it up So I let that sit for a few hours and then I decided that I, you know, I'm going to go full out with the, with the peacock feathers. And this is the 12 by 12 version of the little one you saw me use earlier. And this is the only stencil I own that I have both the, the mini and the, and, and the 12 by 12. And I'm just using straight up black acrylic paint with a makeup sponge and going in there. And again, because the canvas has give, it's a little bit difficult to do. So I have to hold down the stencil a little bit to make sure I get a crisp um, stencil. Now at the top, the black that you see there, that is a die cut that I cut with my Silhouette Cameo. And then I painted it black. And I was kind of going to have kind of a dream catcher, and I thought, okay, this is kind of a stylized dream catcher with that pattern. And the and the die cut is very similar to the stencil that I used with the modeling paste, and then I did some stenciling. So again, I'm not introducing totally different shapes here. I'm kind of echoing what's already been there. So I cut out the word dream, again, with my silhouette, and the debate is on as to whether I paint it black or leave it white. I asked in my Facebook group, some people said silver and maybe gold because there's gold in there. Um, 
we'll just have to wait and see what I end up doing. Now I'm applying this with gel medium. It's a bit finicky to apply because it's just, you know, like a net, but uh, I really like the effect of it. And you might, if you've seen a few of my latest videos, I've used these die cuts in a variety of ways um, on my canvases and on my art journal pages. So I'm anxious to cut more things with my silhouette, more big die cuts like that to add texture and interest to my projects. Some of the dots that lead up don't go all the way to the die cut, so I'm just extending them by just adding bits and pieces of the stencil. Now I need to decide what color to make the word. I was going to leave it white, but then part of me said, oh no, do it black. So I posted it on Facebook, and I was pretty sure I was going with white, and then I saw a video where they used embossing powder on top of the die cut to give it kind of that glossy thought look and when I went to my embossing powders I found this gold so that's what I'm going for so I'm using the Versamark and stamping on to the die cut now this is just on it's paper that's a little heavier than copy paper I'm not sure what the weight is and I'm going to sprinkle the gold embossing powder on here. Now I'm going to freely admit right here, I am not great when it comes to embossing. I don't have an embossing heat tool, I just have the Ranger heat tool, which is not a perfect for embossing. It'll get the job done kind of, sort of, but not as easily or as successfully as a regular embossing tool. So I'm kind of heating it up a little bit because I find that that helps promote success. And sorry about the shadows here. It's kind of late in the evening. I decided to get this done. And there's bits and pieces that don't quite turn, and I don't understand that. So most of it turns, and then it leaves this one piece that just, no matter how much heat you put on it, kind of doesn't turn. So I decided, you know, since there were a few spots that just didn't cover it, I'm going to do this one more time. So I'm stamping the Versamark again on top of the gold and sprinkling it once again with the embossing powder. But already I can tell from how it looked that gold was definitely the right choice. There's gold in the background that I have here and that makes it really work together well. So I'm just applying the heat tool and, and I just love that magical moment when it all turns, right? And I do it a third time. And then once that cools, I am just painting on off to the side, and you'll see me in a minute, the back with gel medium. And I'm applying the gel medium quite liberally. I don't want to get the gel medium because it's a matte finish on the top, on top of the gold, because I'm thinking that will dull it. And if I do, I just quickly wipe it off with a baby wipe. And I'm just pressing it down. I find gel medium takes a little while to adhere. I guess I could have used Aileen's tacky glue or some other glue here if I wanted. I'm kind of pressing on there a little bit, just trying to get it to completely adhere to the canvas. And again, because the canvas has give, whereas the paper doesn't, it's a little bit more challenging. 
Now off camera, I did the float technique. So in the pictures, you're going to see kind of shading around the word dream. And I did that with the float technique and black acrylic paint. So here's the finished project. And I really absolutely love it. So, you know, if you're unsure about something, let it sit for a while. And then I'm sure you'll come up with the correct and right um, decision. Some close-ups of the canvas, all those yummy layers and colors and textures that exist. Thank you so much for watching and participating. Again, any supplies will be in the description box below with links to, to Amazon if you are interested in purchasing them or just want to know what, what the name of the stencils are and the like. Bye for now.